Evening everyone, I'm just going to move the microphone, hopefully it didn't make any noise. It is Sunday 15th of January and we are into the final 10, dun dun dun, um, and they are all proper Isla, I suppose you call it, um, although we don't have 10 actual distilleries left to go. Um, but let's take a tour around the island um, and cover ourselves off towards the end and we're going to go to the north east of the island, which is here on the map. Um, if you look up on the top right hand corner of that particular map of Isla, you will see the most northerly on the distillery is Bunnahaven, um, and that's how you pronounce it, Bunnahaven. Um, and it was actually marketed at one point, uh, they called themselves the unpronounceable malt. Um, so um, this was a sample that was um, very generously donated by the wonderful Joe Lawson. Um, and this is one of the first um, donations that I think I got. Um, I, it was either Joe or Jason B. Standing, one of those two were the first ones to actually send me some samples towards the challenge. And I'm fairly certain it was Joe. It was a pack of about 10, I think. And, and I was like gobsmacked that somebody had sent me that many, not knowing just how many sample I would get from a load of people um, around the world. It's, it's just been incredible. So Joe, I'm kind of pleased that I've managed to not quite come full circle, but um, some of the first samples that I've been sent are now right at the end of the challenge. Um, and this one and the next one I'm gonna do are both from Joe as well. So um, it's the uh, the standard 12 year old that I've got, which is good because it's their, their core release. So um, Bunnahaven was, uh, you know where it is on the island. It was, it was founded by uh, three gentlemen, two of them were brothers, um, James and William Greenlees, uh, along with a guy called William Robinson, who founded the distillery in 1881. And they built the distillery and also built houses for people to work there because it was pretty remote up at that bit of the island. Bunnahaven means the mouth of the river, and the river is um, the River Margadale, which is um, the, uh, the water source for the distillery itself. Now, in um, 18, no, it was 1881, I think it was 1887, I didn't write it down, but I'm sure it was 1887, they then ended up joining forces with the Glen Rothes Distillery um, and formed a company called Highland Distillers and ticked along quite nicely, really, as Highland Distillers. Um, Bunnahaven was predominantly used in blends, um, to be perfectly honest, um, and it, it was just doing okay. Um, they did release it in the... I think it was the mid 80s when it became sort of a, they, they started looking at the single malt um, release. Um, and in 1999, um, Highland Distillers, the company, was acquired by Edrington. Um, Edrington, the company that own McAllen, um, Highland Park, famous grouse blend, um, and you know, big company. And essentially, Bunnahaven was surplus to requirements. It wasn't part of their core brands and therefore it was corporate speak nonsense in terms of, you know, right. So they mothballed it um, and it was mothballed for uh, four years until it was sold to Burn Stewart um, along with the Black Bottle um, brand, which is the blended whiskey, covered it off in the challenge, a large proportion of which is Bunham. So Burn Stewart reopened the distillery, began to um, really concentrate on, on quality over quantity. Unfortunately, Burn Stewart themselves, their parent company went into a bit of um, upheaval. Uh, 2013, it was, a, it was a South African based company, I think, who um, basically went, went under uh, and left Burn Stewart in a lot of trouble. But um, it's now owned by another South African distributor of drinks called Distel. So they have increased volumes. Um, it was taken over in 2013. Did I just say that? I can't remember. Um, they've increased volumes because they're looking at pushing into the Taiwan market. Because um, as having done Cavalan and everything, we know Taiwan's becoming quite big in terms of Scotch whiskey and also Africa as well. Africa as a whole, not just South Africa. Um, so the warehouses on the, the island actually um, also hold casks for Tobermory and Lecheck, which is on the Isle of Mull, which is literally a stone throw away, um, simply because there's no room on Mull. Um, and they're the nearest distillery, so they, they actually hold their casks. Now, Bunnahaven isn't unpeated. It's not totally unpeated. Some places I've read say it's unpeated completely, um, but there are quite a few other places that are saying, actually, no, it's peated. It's just very, very, very lightly peated. It's near as damn unpeated, as good as. Um, so it's, it, it's one of those where... And, and almost, if you were going to do a tour of Isla, or if you were going to do an Isla tasting, you would start with Bunnahaven as the lightest, 
the smoothest. It's always been known as the kind of the, the, the softest, gentlest uh, whiskey distillery on island. That's not to say they don't do heavily peated versions. They do. They've kind of moved into that. I think Burn Stewart were, were the ones that kind of started looking at Bunnahaven in terms of let's do peated versions. But um, it's traditionally known as the, the, the smoothest, the lightest, the gentlest of, of an Isla whiskey. Um, and the, the one as an introduction into that style of, um, that style of smoky, peaty flavors because there is the merest hint of it. So 12 year old, 46.3%, uh, which is a very, very specific percentage. Um, you are looking at, uh, here's a picture of the bottle actually. Um, you're looking at um, 36 quid uh, a bottle roughly. I think that's on the deal. You're looking at 35 to 40 quid for sake of argument. Um, I think Marshall Malt had it on at 36. Uh, Whiskey Exchange had it on at 42, but I think Marshall Malt is on a deal. So it's, call it 40 quid for sake of argument. Um, quite a dark color for a 12 year old whiskey. So I do wonder if coloring has been added because that is pretty chunky. Now what I don't know is what casks they're matured in, but I think, I think it's sherry casks, but I'm not 100% certain. That's something I didn't really delve into and nowhere I was looking sort of mentioned it. I think it's sherry casks rather than bourbon, but that's a pretty dark color for a 12 year old. And it's almost kind of like almost too dark for a 12 year old, but it depends on the cast. If it's sort of refill or first fill sherry casks, then you know it, it could well be. Somebody might be able to confirm in the comments. I'm hoping not, um, but it is entirely possible with that, that coloration there. It's entirely possible the coloring has been added. So on the nose, there is, there is a smokiness, but it's really distant and it's sweet. It's really sweet. There is a saltiness to it as well. You know, the Bunnahaven's right on the coast. The, there is a, a kind of a sea saltiness to it, but it's again, it's not full on. It's a distant sea saltiness. It's like you're inside the building on the coast. So the sea air has got to seep through the windows and the walls and everything like that. It's not like you stood on the beach. And it's, it's a lovely, sweet toffiness. Um, there is maltiness to it. There is, a, there is a sherried element to it as well, to be honest. And it's a lighter sherry style rather than that deeper, richer bourbon feel. So I'd be more confident saying it's sherry cask, which means it's bourbon because if I take a 50-50, it's always gonna be the wrong one. But it's lovely and delicate, but it, because of this very, very slight peatiness that it's got, it gives it complexity. It gives it an extra dimension. It's not just a generic malted, malty whiskey a multi sweet whiskey. There's something else, there's character to it, there's depth. I think it's lovely, it's lovely nose. It's so, it's gentle and it's soft, but it's got bags of character. And everything that's on the nose is there on the palate. That sea salt, that really distant peat, really distant smoke, toffee, caramel, salted caramel, milk chocolate. There is a sherry element to it. There's quite a, a, a fruity sherry element to it. Almost like a, a cream sherry even. But again, there, there is just this extra dimension. There's this extra character of, of, of it's, sea, it's sea salt and smoke and a really, really distant bonfire smoke. But it's a sweet smoke as well. Kind of like a, um, like a barbecue, but again, a distant barbecue, not when you stood right next to it. But the 46.3%, and it's odd how it's so specific like that, gives it this heat and it lifts everything. It doesn't mask any of the flavors, it supports it, but it doesn't let the flavors, flavors die out. It doesn't let you, you get to the finish and it keeps on going because it's got this higher alcohol percentage that keeps this fire going in your, in your mouth. But it's not fires, it's embers. It's not like it's really hot. It's embers of, it, it kind of just, it just lingers and it keeps, if it was lower, if it was 43%, if it was 40%, it would probably be dead. It would probably just disappear and just go bleh. The, the, the dilution would just kill everything. If it was too, if it was higher, if it was 48%, 50%, it would be um, overpowering because of the gentleness, because of the, the subtleness of this whiskey. The, pe the alcohol percentage is spot on. 
absolutely spot on. It gives enough lift and backbone and heat to um, partner every single delicate flavor that's in there without um, overpowering it, but without diluting it down to the point when you lose that complexity that's there. It's bang on, it is absolutely bang on for a soft, drinkable whiskey, great after dinner, great in front of a fire, great when it's cold outside. It's absolutely wonderful. I've, I've really enjoyed Bonner Harvin through the years. I've had it a number of times and I've always liked it. And it's great. And I think if you don't like peated whiskies, you would still like this because this is more sweet um, and it's a saltiness to it, but even then it's not an overpowering saltiness. There is a lovely sherry character to it, a really fruity sherry character to it as well. And it, it, it is an introduction to Isla Whiskey without really being an Isla Whiskey. It, it's, it really does kind of like, oh, I don't like Isla Whiskey. You could try that and there is enough in there outside of this very subtle peat element that goes, well, it doesn't really taste like an Isla Whiskey. Well, it is an Isla Whiskey, but it's the, if you were to say all Isla Whiskey is peated, this is the un Isla Whiskey. This is the one unlike the rest of them. I think it's fantastic. I think it's so good. It's absolutely great stuff. And I'm so pleased it's as good as I remember it. And that's the reason why it, the old black bottle was fantastic because there was a large proportion of Bunnahaven in that black bottle. The new version I've still not tried yet, so I don't know whether it's as good, but it's just a great whiskey. It's absolutely fantastic. I love the stuff. Might be too sweet for some. That's the only thing I think would put some people off. Too sweet or not peaty enough which is fine, maybe a bit too sherry. There is a real kind of sherry element now coming through, but I think it's absolutely fantastic. I love the stuff. Joe, thank you very much for that. I, I'm so glad it's as good as I remember. Um, I'm gonna do a quick rinse out and then I shall crack on with the next one, which is just down the road. So I'll see you then, cheers.